Two dudes reviewing the news. Pop culture, video games, movies, and shoes. Quincy and Justin with a nerdy forecast. So stay a while and welcome to the Ugly Mugs Podcast. Welcome to the Ugly Mugs Podcast. I'm your host, Quincy. And you're the host, Justin. And uh, this very may possibly be our last quarantined broadcast. We don't know yet. It uh, all depends on how things go for our state. We might be back to normal here soon. Or we might staring at each other's ugly mugs. Fucking lockdown. Uh, that's a very high possibility too, because people don't want to be be adults during all this. So. Four hundred confirmed cases in the last three days. Yep. Um. It. Going out and shopping, it's interesting seeing things. Like I went to Sally's Beauty today to get Lauren hair dye, and they're being very serious about it. Uh, only five people in the store at a time. It's a very small store. Yeah. Um, five people in the store at a time. They're wearing masks and gloves, and they're locking the door to keep people from coming, just coming in willy-nilly. And I'm fine with it. I waited outside for a couple minutes, then I got to go in, bought my stuff, left. And what I wanted was right there as soon as I walked in, so I just grabbed and walked out. And well, I, I didn't just grab and walk out. I grabbed, paid, and walked out. So what you're telling me is you grabbed it and walked out. Yes, I grabbed and walked out. Okay. Um, you know, we went to Psychic Eye a couple days ago, and, you know, they're handling things just fine. Um, we went to a local D&D shop the other day. They're handling things just fine. I went, I did uh, curbs. I pick up for Zia today, and they opened their stores back up starting tomorrow. Uh, little Shop of Magic? Yeah, Little Shop of Magic. Cool. I recommend that place. Uh, I, I can't exact. I don't know if that would basically debase you, but if you guys are in Vegas, Little Shop of Magic, good place to just pick up. Anything. No, that's fine. Uh, yeah, it's uh, right at because uh, I don't live that close to it. It's right at uh, Flamingo and Durango, right on the corner. Yeah. Um, sits on the second story, big space. Uh, and the way they're doing it is they're saying masks are encouraged. They're not forcing you to wear them, but I mean, even if they are, it's a mask. Put it on. It's fine. Um. Then when you get up, they have like it blocked to where you can only go like you're to kind of like follow the flow of the store. And what it is is they've got arrows taped down and they lead you straight to the uh, bathroom because you have to wash your hands before you're allowed to start shopping. <laughs> okay, all right, I can get down to, with that. To make sure you're not touching stuff. Oh, that reminds me, they had a board game there, and I meant to send you a photo, and I forgot. Ooh. So well, I'm gonna send you a photo, photo here in just gonna, a second. I'm gonna mention my team. Yeah. So, um, I think I just got a bad batch of it because I've had London Fruit and Herb before, but it's a London Fruit and Herb green tea and orange. But I decided to do a little bit of abomination crafting where I have dumped in a, a half of a can of Kickstart orange flavor, and it made it so much... Oh, it, it's, it's pretty good. I mean, that was actually a really smart idea, I think. I mean, it, it has a very interesting note. It doesn't really take away from the green tea flavor too much. It's not a you know a marvelous idea, but it tastes good. Added it. The original on its own, as said, bad idea. I've seen that board game, um, and I wanted it, <laughs> but uh, I just feel like I got a bad batch, which sucks. Because the first one I had out of this box was very light, and then I went and had just the regular green tea, and it was fine. You? So, um, I haven't tried it yet. Sorry, I was uh, I was kind of just zoning. My bad. It's okay. <laughs> I, I was just curious if you were still there because <laughs> no, I'm still here. We haven't we haven't lost each other. No, um, I was zoning because I was reading about the coffee that oh. I have today. And your so, coffee is. Well, that's the great thing is I actually picked it up at the little uh, shop of Magical Gaming that we were talking about. Mm. Um, and it's from uh, Geek Grind, which is one I've been talking about doing for a little bit now. I've got another friend that sent me it a couple times. You've sent it to me a couple of times. And my thing was always that it's fifteen ninety nine for a bag online. It's uh, 340 grams, I think. Let me double check this. Um, wow, their Zoom feature on their website is terrible. I can't tell. I think it's 340. Um, it's fifteen ninety nine for a bag, but they only do free shipping if you spend fifty dollars. Yeah, I mean that's good if you're bulking up, I guess. Yeah, and they do like it's actually twenty bucks if you do a one time purchase. If you subscribe, they have like a subscription thing to where they deliver. You can say set it for seven days, fifteen days, or thirty days. They'll do free shipping then, and you save twenty percent off, and that's when you get the fifteen ninety nine. 
So you can get it at fifteen ninety nine with free shipping, provided you're going to get it regularly. They're going to be sending you coffee consistently. That's and I'm looking. I'm looking at the website as well. Uh, some of these bags are super cute. I will admit. Like I'm mm-hmm. looking at the uh, the Goblin Gulp, where uh, yeah. Goblin Gulp is best to chug. I'm like that. Okay, and it's got a nice little cute little goblin little cup in it. And then you got Siege Fuel, which has, you know, a big, big work on it. Elder's Fathom, which I immediately go, yeah! And it's not like any of the regulars. It's a ancient blend. And I'm like, you guys are, you guys know how to market. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't mind trying this. Well, and I, I actually told Lauren you wouldn't. She goes, he doesn't like coffee. I was like, but, but. this is different. It's geeky coffee. He's going to be interested. Um, I actually have the size now. It's a uh, They've got the, the big bag's 12 ounces, or um, you could do like really big and go five pounds. They'll sell you five pounds, which is uh, $69.99 or $55.99 with free shipping if you do the like by the days thing, like where they keep sending it. Well, so you can do straight up five pounds of coffee. Five pounds of coffee, what is it, per week or per month? Well, you, you can do 50, pounds, you can do, five pounds you can do per, week. well, you can do per week at seven days. You can do 15 days or you can do 30 days. Okay, so those, every two weeks, five pounds. I can see doing that. If if yeah. I was an active coffee drinker that enjoyed one of these blends. Uh, yeah, I, I see I'm wondering if, I don't know the laws about like a coffee shop brewing coffees and whatnot, but I mean, like the five pound bag, I feel like that would be something for that, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, but yeah. the one I did today is the Elven Enlightenment. Um, it's the Canopy Blend Medium Roast. And this, is, this gets uh, two out of five beans on the uh, scale to make it medium. And as far as likeness, uh, five stars with uh, ten reviews. So all ten people that have reviewed this have said it is a delicious coffee. What is your take on it? It is very good. I like it. Um, I use my creamer, my French vanilla creamer with it just fine. Uh, Lauren tried it with her caramel, and she really likes it. Um, I, have a, I have a gift as far as a creamer for next week. If, okay. If this all lifts up. All right. I think you're gonna. I think you're gonna have a problem with it. I, I'm, I'm I have scared. a huge smile. I'm scared now. <laughs> oh, your fear. Your fear has only begun. Um, it's an interesting thing, and I, I hope. I hope it does raise up some eyebrows when I when I hand it to you. Okay. And now the other thing I found interesting about this was I bought the bag at the little shop of gaming, like I said. And they had a whole display. They had a bunch of flavors, and we just kind of picked one. Um, I spent twenty bucks. Twenty even. So basically, yeah, for the one bag. So it was basically like I got the one-time purchase from the website minus the shipping charge. And I mean, is it fair for the price? Do you figure? Yeah, I mean, we've gotten. I think we're on our third pot of it now, um, and we're still not out. I mean, it's it's whole bean. We grind it ourselves. We grind it to this uh, the uh, fineness we need for our coffee maker, and we make a full twelve cup pot. So okay. I mean, yeah, just, as long as, not... just as long as you see the the plus of it, I I can see the few that I would want to try, such as well, like I I would like to try Elders Fathom or Frost Giant. Or... Now, are you basing these off the names? Or are you basing these off the flavors? I'm basing them off the flavors. I am actually digging into them and taking a look at what they are okay. hinted because just making sure the um, Elders Fathom offers notes of chocolate, vanilla, apples, walnuts with a rich velvet finish, and I'm like that actually sounds pretty good to me. And anyone out there that's like, oh, I don't have a grinder, or I've used my blender to grind, and I hate doing that, um, they have them. You can buy certain ones already pre-ground for you. They've got a box also where it's like a seven-set blend, so it's a gift box to try the different flavors. They've also got got four-set blends. K-Cups. Yeah, and then the Dragon's Roast comes in K-Cups, so you've got different options. Um, They also have a slew of shirts and cups that are really cool. I really like their cups. Uh, I haven't seen their cups. Hold on, I'm gonna go check out their cups. Oh, yeah, okay. I like their cups. Oh, they even got like full blown mug mugs. Yeah, uh, travel cups as well. Um, they're also doing a thing right now together for Columbia benefit. Um, so you can go through and buy certain shirts and mugs and coffees Coffee. and even face masks Ow. to help support this come together for uh, for a Columbia thing. So. All kinds of stuff. Go check out their website. It's just geekgrindcoffee.com. Simple. Um, they're not a sponsor. Just, you know, like normal, we try different coffees and we <laughs> kind of fell down a... 
<laughs> we kind of fell down a rabbit hole with this one. So, <laughs> and I would and the the very interesting thing, like if you are into interesting coffees, like darker coffees, there's the chaos samples where you get four easy to brew setup samples, and then there's the lawful ones, which are the more delicious and lighter ones. And I'm like, that's a really good way to do it. And I'm, you know, I would like to see more from these guys. And hopefully, I don't, I'm not exactly wanting a sponsorship. I just kind of want to just be partnered with them. Like, I don't want any funding from them. I just, if this is something that you like, as far as, <laughs> I could just see trying just to promote these guys. Justin sitting here telling people not to give us money. I, he's so great. <laughs> I, I, well, if they can, I'm not going to, I mean, or product. Product will work. Product will work. You get your coffee, I get I get the push of cool ass designs. Yeah. Very true. Um I might actually their sampler box, the the big seven set one, uh the gift sam- slash sampler box, mm-hmm. it's only forty bucks. Yeah. And um it, it it that seems like it is a little bit pricey for it, but What sucks is you'd have to pay shipping on that because it Ten, falls ten bucks underneath the Dude. free shipping, but you throw in like a mug or two. I mean, no, what, how much are the mugs? The mugs are twenty four ninety nine. So you throw in a travel mug, boom! I got free shipping. Yeah, and hmm, Dwarven Dawn, dark, medium dark roast, deep mountain. Blue. You're so in love. I I'm loving this. Like <laughs> I I Jesus man. Like, I, I had seen it, but I never, like, delved into it as hard as this. But now that I'm here delving, I want to delve. Uh, so, um, really quick, I want to try to do something. Uh, okay. And we, we're going to teach everybody something here real quick. How the hell do I screenshot my screen right now and send it to you? Uh, okay, print screen. You hit the oh. print screen button that's above, like, delete-ish. Yep, I see it, okay. And then go over to the chat, control V, uh-huh. and then enter. Control V. Awesome. It's going to send me um, screens, but... Yeah, because I'm I, dual screening over here, but cool. Yeah, me too. So, all right. Uh, there you go, people. You guys learned something new with me and Justin today. Copy. Um, Ooh, okay. Yeah, all right, all right. I got you. I got you. I'm going to do this right now. Like, all right. we're doing this. <laughs> so I just sent Justin stuff to make him happy. All right. Um, let's move on. I, got a re- I have a review, actually. I do, so. I do as well. All right. Um... I don't think we can rock, paper, scissors over the internet, so you can go first. Want to bet? <laughs> what are you going to do? Send me an emoji? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that just looks like you're trying to punch me in the face. <laughs> All right, let me see. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, but you go ahead. You you take the lead. Sorry, right, because I because I just sent your paper anyways. <laughs> Uh, All right. Um, I watched Mortal Kombat Legends: Scorpion's Revenge. Okay, I've heard good things about that one. Actually, scratch that. I bought oh. and then watched this. It was on sale for five bucks on uh, Xbox. Oh. So I was like, "Fuck it." Um, it's good. Uh, it kind of it's basically supposed to be the first game, or you can look at it as the first movie or whatever. It's the beginning. Johnny doesn't know what any of this is. He's going into this all new, meeting Sonya for the first time, getting the sea uh, uh, scorpion stuff. But the great thing is, it has the knowledge of the later games. So things that like we experience go back to like what you experience. And there's going to be some spoilers here, but anyone that's played the games should know these things. So Scorpion goes through and kills Sub Zero, um, the first Sub Zero. Which is that Bihan or is Bihan the second Sub Zero? I don't. You're asking me stuff about Mortal Kombat. Okay. So he kills Sub Zero in the games because Sub Zero killed his family and him. Like they killed like his whole tribe. Yeah. Okay. Later on in the games, we find out it wasn't actually Sub Zero. This movie, because it knows the future games, is able to incorporate the fact that it, it turns out it wasn't Sub Zero into this first section of the movie. Right, first section of the story, I shouldn't say, not first section of the movie, but first section of the story. So Scorpion's getting his revenge thinking it's Sub Zero and everything. And then we find out that it wasn't, which is very nice. Um rather than the story having to slowly unfold and then like have to rewrite itself, the story gets to start with all the knowledge of the future, which is very cool. Um it's enjoyable, it's funny, the voice acting is fucking amazing. Uh did you watch Dexter at all? A uh, little bit of the first season, but it, it tried to encapsulate me, but it just didn't work. 
Well, I don't know if you remember her, but the actress that plays his sister in that, she's also in White Chicks. She's the one that keeps talking about having a fat ass and keeps grabbing herself. I don't know if that helps you either. But no. uh, she voices Sonya. You can't even tell it's her. She did, like delved into those characters so amazing that I don't hear her actual voice at all. Interesting. Okay. Uh, um, I get it, but I, I'm like, huh. And then the guy... Let me see if I can pull up their names. I got the... Where's IMDb? Give me IMDb, damn it. Um, the one that voices uh, Johnny in this... So, okay, here we go. Jennifer Carpenter uh, plays Sonya Blade in this. Um, and then the one that plays uh, Johnny in this is Joe McHale. Um, you would know him from Community... Uh, more recently, he's doing the. I think he's doing the recap show for fucking Tiger King. I think. <laughs> um, hmm. they're definitely actors you would know if you saw their faces. I'm just gonna okay. send you. Yeah. Okay. But uh, he, when I saw that he was Johnny, I was like, I mean, I'm, I'm not mad about it. He's a good actor, and just not necessarily what I expect for Johnny. That, and okay. then, um, uh, 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 the fucking um, that one. Okay, when you said the name, I was like, that sounds familiar. But for I Joe think, McHale, yeah. Um, he did the, uh, that one, fuck, uh, it's on E! Entertainment, uh. The Soup? Yeah. Talk soup. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and so, he, when I heard he was gonna be Johnny, I was like, alright, I mean, he's a good actor, we'll see what he does, and then he played Johnny in this, I was like, oh, I love him, <laughs> like, dude, this is great. Um, and you got some other really good people, Greg Griffin is Katana. My one gripe with the entire thing was Katana's costume looked terrible. Oh, really? It didn't look like the OG? No, it was bad. Uh, and maybe I just don't remember the original one all that well, but it was not a good costume. I'm going to see if I can find a photo okay, for you. Okay, and as for Je- uh, Jennifer Carpenter, yes, I do recommend You recognize her now? Yeah. Uh, Katana. Uh, if you had mentioned uh, quarantine, I would have been like, Hleh. okay, I know who you're talking about. <laughs> Okay, see, I always forget about that because it's I wasn't so a big bad. fan of quarantine. Oh, it's so bad. Come on, don't don't try and liven it up. It is um, bad. Lauren liked the one it's based off of. Uh, was it Wreck? I don't know. I didn't know I it was based off of anything. Yeah, it's, a, it's an American remake of a foreign movie. Right. Uh, uh, and the, the other one's better. Okay, but overall a good, a good would you say? Yeah, well acted. Um, had a nice little thing at the beginning because it's Warner Entertainment or Warner uh, Animation. Like you see the Warner Brothers logo at the beginning, and then you get uh, Daffy Duck comes out goofing around and everything. And all of a sudden, Scorpion reaches through and goes, "Go over here!" and grabs him and rips him back through. Oh my! I'm sending you an they image killed- right. I'm sending you a link right now for the. Um, uh. Katana's costume and okay. it. Uh, and in that midst of time, guess who we're affiliated with? <laughs> Seriously, we already? Are, yep, we are already affiliated with Geek Grind Coffee. It only took <laughs> a couple little fillings out here, and they were like, "You know what? Sure." And then they just opened it up. So, uh, link is going to be down in the description to get you some really good coffee. Uh, holy crap, their spread is actually really nice as far as commission. Um, use our link. Don't use any other yeah. link. <laughs> use our link or else. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't like that costume. Right? And, like, right here, the image I sent you shows you the the game version. And the game version is okay, but I'm still not even fine, a fan of the I'm game version. I'm looking at the animated, much. and I'm, like, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, this kind of looks like a Kingdom Hearts costume. It was the only thing in the entire movie that I didn't like. Uh, I do like the um, the Reddit's active uh, b- banner up top. I like that oh, yeah, a lot. That's, it looks that's cool. <laughs> really nice. Um, if you go to reddit.com slash r slash Mortal Kombat with a K, um, you'll see a really nice banner of Sub-Zero and Scorpion with a, a, a shaded moon. Sub-Zero's got the snow. Scorpion's got the rain. It looks so nice and dynamic. Um, it seems Ed Boon finally... I know that you you are here and there with Mortal Kombat, but Ed Boon seems to have gotten his head out of his ass to finally, you know, be like, this is the direction Mortal Kombat needs to be in. I don't, I don't even know that I want to call it head out of ass, because, like, 9 was great, 10 was an issue, this was great, and Ed was a major part of this. 
I, I feel like more like maybe it was just one of those things where it's like you get caught up in your own head sometimes when you're trying to write things. Sure. You know? Sure. And maybe that. he just was taking the project in a way he thought was going to be great and it wasn't and now he's kind of dialed it, uh, in a different direction and it's working. Now, the crazy thing in this is the guy that voices uh, Scorpion in this is Patrick Seitz. Seitz? Seitz? Um, he did amazing. And that's with having always experienced Ed Boon as Scorpion. Because Ed Boon's always been Scorpion, other than, um, I think, Injustice, which was the other time that Seitz has done him. So, uh, you've technically got a game voice in here because Seitz has done him for Injustice. Oh, okay. Okay. Go ahead and hit your review, but I do have Mortal Kombat news, so I don't know if you want to, how, what order we want to do that in. Uh, I'll hit mine real quick. Okay. So, on sale right now, 20 bucks, Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire on Steam. I said, you know what? I got a little bit of overtime. I want to treat myself in this weird, trying time. Treat yourself. Treat myself. Holy shit, this game starts off so strong and so well written. Um, I've never been wrapped up in a top-down isometric game as quickly as Pills of Eternity 2. And it starts off with two of my favorite voice actors, Matthew Mercer and Ashley Johnson. Both of Critical Role, yes, but I'm just saying I mean, they, they are still my tops. It, I mean, it, them being from Critical Role just kind of shows that, you oh. know... And here's they've the also thing. got a fun personality. Oh yeah, and here's the other cool thing: you get to play as their campaign one characters. If you, oh wait, it's free DLC. You get to play as Grog Strongjaw, Pike Trickfoot, um, <laughs> Vexalia, Vaxeldan, and Percy. They do not have abilities for um, what is his name? I don't know. You're kind of Scanlan. Scanlan's away from. Hall. Okay. But soon, uh, they they they're say they said soon, but I don't know. But even so, you get Grog, you know, going. I would like to rage and all that nonsense. It feels good. It it fits the world perfectly, even though they're from another world entirely. Um, but as far as a top-down isometric storytelling game, I recommend it. I'm not going to spoil a damn thing. Even if you haven't played the first one, it actually does a really good job at kind of cleaning it up to where. You you start off going like, oh, wait, should I have played the first one? No, it catches you up. It actually says, hey, what would you have done in this situation? Because mm-hmm. the first one is very muddy, if you will. It's not hard to get through, but if you make it through the mud, you can reach the finale, that sort of thing. It feels different. It hits a little different. Pillars of Eternity 2... Starts off strong and hits you hard, but you you can get you can get it quick. Uh, I I like games that do that because there's a lot of games that you know there are, the older version's a little harder to find or something or just not readily available to me or I'm a cheap bastard and don't want to go and uh, uh, get them. Uh, so a game that ties me into the old stuff is really nice. That was something that was nice about the new uh, Tekken game. Um, and then, oh, what was it? What was it? Um, not, uh, uh, Divinity. Divinity 2, or, no, Divinity Original Sin 2 is another one that I would like to recommend. But if you had a choice between the two, I'd say get Pillars of Eternity 2. Like, both of them feel good, but Pillars, Pillars hits that note. It hits it so good. And if you want to be a huge douchebag in, in Divinity, it's kind of hard to do. In Pillars, it's super easy to do, so... Um... <laughs> if you just want to be that guy. I mean, how does that how does that work? Elaborate. Like, as far as just being a huge douchebag, or... Like, are you just being a douchebag in the game, or is it like an online, you're being a douchebag? Oh, no, no, no. It, it's okay. all single player. Um, okay, I was gonna say, like, because I, I fucking hate people like that online. Oh, no. I was reading a thing, so I... We didn't talk about it uh, last week, but DayZ hit Game Pass, oh, and I was like, I've never played it, and so I went and checked it out, and you can get a single server, you can get like your own server, but you have to rent it, and I'm not going to do that. Um, and so I was looking online because I couldn't get in any of the servers, and I gave up. I, have, I spent like half an hour trying to get onto the game and can't. The servers are too full. 
Um, and I was kind of just scrolling through some Reddit stuff where people were talking about like easier ways to get on the servers, what to look for, stuff like that. And one guy was talking about, oh, all these new Game Pass people gives me people to kill. And it's like, why, why do you get to be like that? That's not the point of the game. It is, um, but it isn't. It is, but it isn't. And basically, he's making it sound like he's going to stand there at the beach picking you off as soon as you start the game. And it's like, they don't even have anything to loot then. Because it's as soon as the game... That, that's pointless. There's another guy, though, that talks about the fact that what he does is he goes down to the beach. And he's like, I, he's like, I do this, this every now and then. And now that the Game Pass thing, I'm definitely going to be doing it. He goes down to the beach and he hunts the hunters. Hey! And I was like, that, that's what heroes do. That's what, <laughs> that is what heroes do. Oh, man. Uh, but... Uh, a couple more games. Let's stick around the Game Pass because a couple more things are hitting Game Pass right now. Uh, yeah, so we had a little bit of a tease to uh, on Twitter. It was a simple tease, and we figured it out quite quick, honestly. Um, but uh, it was um, just some glowing orbs, yeah. essentially eyes. Uh, and one of the thoughts was maybe something from Ori, but those are both already on there. There's nothing new going to be announced. So the main thought, and what we were both thinking from the beginning, was it was going to be Final Fantasy. Yeah. And sure enough, it was. Final Fantasy so, IX, the most interesting but strange of the entire series. The very big heads and very thin bodies. <laughs> yeah, it is. And it's got some very strange music later on in the game. I'm not going to spoil anything. It's still a good game to go through if you got Game Pass. I recommend it. It's just... Be prepared for a bit of a. Sl- I don't want to call it a slog. Um, it is. It is a trudge to get c- certain aspects down. It's better than eight. I can say it's better than eight. I've never played it, so this will be a first time for me. Yeah, I, I mean, do I? Is there anything I need story wise before I go in that you nope. can think of? Nope. Okay. Not a single thing. You are a okay to just drop on in. All of the. All of the the Final Fantasy games are individual unless they are like number and then subtitle, such as Final Fantasy Thirteen, Final Fantasy Thirteen, Lightning Returns, Final Fantasy Thirteen. I forgot the other subtitle for that one. Those ones are connected. But if you played twelve and then went to thirteen, or went thirteen and then back to twelve, they are not connected by any okay. way, shape, or form. Now you could make the argument that twelve is connected to Final Fantasy Tactics. Eh, very loosely, uh, you could say that um, seven is connected to fifteen through a distanced relationship. Again, another shrug. Like it's not directly connected. Um, but they're they're all still kind of set in the same world concept type, right? Like, not, not really. N- no? Okay. Like, no. It shows how little I know, because to be fair, I've only ever played the original and then the most recent. And I don't mean most recent being like with all the remakes and stuff, but no, the most recent chronologically. Oh, 15. Yeah. Uh, as far as 15 doesn't have any locations that are anywhere else, the connection between 12 and tactics is locations, but not like geography-wise. Because in tactics, you could just plop them wherever. But it's just names. It's the namesakes. Characters, no. Uh, Lineages, no. It's just names of places. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wasn't sure. Um, But alright, okay, cool. Uh, So I've got a couple couple things here for Game Pass also. Um, Who does? Alan Wake, uh, because of the anniversary... Is supposed to be hitting. I liked Alan Wake. Alan Wake was fun. I never, I, I never it. uploaded the rest of it to uh, YouTube before the hard you, drive cracked. You didn't, so you'll have to go back through and play it again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I do know I can't find it now. So I found this article earlier, and I just spent the last several minutes of this trying to find it again. I can't find it. Xbox, or Microsoft just acquired a company, and a couple original Xbox games are supposed to be hitting availability on console um, sometime soon. It wasn't anything outstanding. But it's kind of pissed me off that I can't find it now. Like I know Halo Two Anniversary, the updated version of Halo Two, got pushed onto. No, because it's it's something that they didn't. It was something they didn't own. Oh really? Uh, okay. Yeah, they, they they just bought a company, and now I can't find it, and it's upsetting me. 
I'm going to keep looking throughout the episode, and I'll let you know if I find it. While you're mentioning that, because guess what? Hmm. The two games that we talked about last week, the Medium and um, uh, Call of the Sea, the two games I'm hyped for, are dropping on Game Pass at launch. There you go. I'm so excited. Now well, while I'm... we're talking about launch titles, from what I understand, we're supposed to possibly get Psychonauts 2. Um, okay. I, ooh. I will have no reason to shell out any money at all for the next, like, 8 to 10 months. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I, I mean, it's supposed to be coming to Game Pass. I know, that's why I said I don't have to shell out any money. Oh, that's what you're saying. I thought you were saying you were going to be broke from it. Oh, I was no. confused. Oh, I, I was know. like, what? And uh, we just got uh, Streets of Rage 4 last week. And yep. we're, yeah, and I never had a, I didn't even know it. It just slipped under my radar. We didn't even mention it because you said you were playing it. I was like, oh, okay, you bought it. Cool. I didn't know it went on Game Pass. Yeah, no, it was Yeah, it was Game Pass. I've been playing it. It's fun. Oh, um, shit. It's a good story. I haven't finished it yet. Lauren actually picked up a controller and started playing with me. Ew. Uh, so it's, it's been an, it's been an interesting, um, thing with Game Pass. And I know a lot of people are upset that, you know, GTA is gone and whatnot from Game Pass, but you know, that was something that happened with Rockstar. That's not Xbox. Um, and we did turn around and. Is that a segue into our next? Well, you can use it as a segue into it. Um, I was going to say they they did make a deal with Rockstar to get you Red Dead Redemption 2 and they did make sure you you had some cash as if you had bought, uh, shark cards. Go ahead and take it. The, uh, mystery free game that we didn't know what it was going to be. Uh, so, the game for this week is Grand Theft Auto V on Epic Game Store. That's super neat. That's fine and fair. I mean, I I own it technically five times. So let's see. PS3, PS4, Xbox One, through you, uh, PC, uh, both times. So, yeah, five times. I own it... Pfft, let me think. I own it... Three? Twice? No, three times. I did claim it on... I claimed it on Epic. I claimed it, I bought it digitally on one, and someone had given me a 360 copy. Gotcha. So I own it three times. Yeah. It's it's ridiculous how many times I own it, and how little I've, I beat the campaign on the Xbox, or no, on the PS4 version, and I called it that. I've never had a reason to go back. But that's not why I wanted to talk about Epic Game Store. Because when you go on there and grab it, let's say you already own it or otherwise, there is a coupon you can grab. For ten dollars off your order, a now coupon that, you say? A coupon I say. Now with that coupon I say, you can grab anything that is fourteen dollars and ninety nine cents or more and deduct ten dollars off. So you can get The Witcher Three Wild Hunt Game of the Year Edition for five dollars. That's that's fucking amazing, and that, that is- right there is one of those games that when it doesn't drop in price. I sorry if it didn't drop in price, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, but the fact that it's almost always on sale just blows my fucking mind. <laughs> I mean, it sells. Shit. No, it, yeah, it does sell, and I just I just find it interesting that you know we're seeing something from a company that we don't see from other companies. Other companies sit there and go, "Oh, people like this game. Let's keep it at sixty dollars for as long as possible." This game's been out for eight years, and it's still $60 because we will never drop the price of this game. Right. But then you've got Witcher 3, which just kills and kills and kills on sales and also has a TV show to go with it and all this other stuff. And they're like, yeah, we'll put it on the sale. Yeah, we'll put it on sale again. Oh, hey, we're going to put it on sale one more time. 70% off. And then they're like, you know, after that 70% off, add another coupon for $10 off, making it a full 85% off? Eighty? No, uh, bigger than that, 90% off. It is 90% off for the Game of the Year edition. Yeah. Oh. And then uh, Metro Exodus for $10. Um, after coupon, of course. Um, Satisfactory for 16 after coupon. Uh, da, 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 da. Borderlands 3 for 20 Uh Assassin's Creed Origins for 5 Journey to the Savage Planet for eight. Like you've got a lot of deals here. Um, something that kind of also kind of smacked me on the radar. Uh, 
Tony Hawk's remastered. Yep, I, I had that on my list too. Um, a Pro Skater One and Two coming to PlayStation Four, Xbox One, and PC. It, the comparisons, because if you watch the trailer, they put them side by side, yeah. or, or not necessarily side by side, but they'll show you one than the other. Yeah. Holy crap! They yeah, you, put a lot of detail into this remaster. Now, who's back? At, hold on, who's making this? Because I know uh, it's still Activision. It's still Activision, but NeverSoft's closed. I don't know who else it is. Vicarious Vision. That's an interesting name for a developer crew. But, I mean, looks good. Looks very good. It just makes me wonder what... I. There's one thing that I want in this is uh, a multiplayer online. Because you couldn't have that back in those old days with 1 and 2. But they did say they were bringing back the entire soundtrack, so I'm not mad. Yeah, that was the other thing. Like they're like an awesome soundtrack, and they showed the list, and I'm just like, oh, crap! I completely forgot the soundtrack on that game on both oh, those were, games. Oh, both of them were amazing. Power Man Five Thousand, come on! Yeah, um, uh, Rob Zombie's brother. Um, I, I I think that one might be one I spend a little bit of money for. Um, and it was funny. I saw a gift that was like uh, it showed like some old guy holding like a skateboard. It was like me in my thirties when uh. Uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 come back. How do you do, fellow kids? <laughs> yeah, I've seen that meme. So. Uh, I mean, seeing as we're on deals and all that, I'm going to slide over to my one of my favorite websites in the entire world, Humble Bundle. Before we get into anything too major. Well, before we go too far, I still have a couple more Game Pass things. Oh, there were more Game Pass things? Yeah, uh, uh, really quick. Uh, Fractured Minds, it's a new uh, immersive uh, artistic sh- uh, short game uh, exploring anxiety and mental health issues. Um, it's through ID at Xbox. Um, th- it'll be hitting May 19th. Wait, what's the game called? Uh, Fractured Minds. Fractured Minds, like your head. Yeah, your know, mind. I'm, just, I'm just trying to figure out what the fuck. Because you're saying mental illness? Okay, I'm going to take a quick peek real quick. Peek, peek. Peek a peeks. Peek a peek. So yeah, that hits uh, on May 19th, so that's just five days away at this point. Um, also, we talked about Final Fantasy. That also hit PC, um, as well as Endless Legend hit PC, and uh, Halo Master Chief Collection Halo 2 is what you were talking about, the anniversary thing. Um, that's available for PC as well. So, Fractured Minds will be console, not PC. Um, there's a bunch of other rumored upcoming uh, Game Pass stuff. Um, like I mentioned, Psychonauts 2. Uh, there's also supposed to be some kind of fighting simulator, Microsoft Fight Simulator. Um, there's talks that Scorn might hit, but that might be, uh, that'll probably be after Series X and may only be for Series X. I'm not entirely sure how Game Pass will work when Series X comes out, because you got to figure there's going to be titles that only work on Series X. I'm hoping that you know? it just rolls over. Everything. I'm sure it will roll over because it'll still be the same Microsoft account, but I'm wondering like it, they're, they're going to have to launch three lists now. You're going to have PC, you're going to have Xbox One, and then you're going to have to have Xbox Series X because certain games won't be playable on the Xbox One. Um, it's also looking like when the Battletoad game finally happens, whenever that'll be, it'll <laughs> probably hit uh, Game Pass because you got to figure with the Moaning Rare and whatnot. Oh, yeah. Oh, so. man. Oh, Jesus. A lot of speculation on upcoming things. Um, did you find the fractured mind thing so you could look at it? I looked at it. Um, it's very much a uncomfortable game. I don't want to call it uncomfortable. It's um, it puts you in the, the that mindset of anxiety, but through another meme. Like um, those videos that you would watch, like when they're filling in uh, a circle, they're filling in a circle with like blue, and then they go outside the line just to get that little bit of uncomfortability. That's what I'm kind of getting from this game. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, it, full benefit. Check it out. I mean, it's it's something that's just there. Um, and then because of we talked about, a little bit about doing the the rewards, like doing Game Pass rewards and stuff, and how it's kind of allowed me to play other things. Um, I just played a game on here, if I can find it. Give me my list of games on Game Pass, you bastard. No. <laughs> um, Do it. No, don't do it. It's, it's like you're working. It's like your powers are fighting me. Battle oh. Chaser Night War. Battle Chaser. That sounds familiar. 
Uh, it's from THQ Nordic. Uh, it's a role playing game. Yes, um, and you get to play with a giant robot. Yeah, I actually really enjoy it. It was a thing like when they achieved like fifteen thousand experience points. That was like the Game Pass weekly re- uh, reward thing. Yeah, I, I hit that and then continued to play the game for another like three hours. Yeah, it looks like it's a lot of fun. Uh, it, it is enjoyable, and I went into one of the dungeons and went with the hardest difficulty on the dungeon. I was like, fuck it, I'll see what this is like, and died my first battle right out the gate. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, this was available through uh, Humble Bundle Monthly, uh, through when it started up on Choice, and I picked it up, and I never had a chance to dig into it because 1,312 games. <laughs> I have way too many games right now. Um, but I would love to dig through this. This, so this right is... now, as if your library is going to get smaller and not continue to grow nonstop for the next billion years, and then slide over and play the same game I've been playing for the last two months. Yes, because that's you. Oh, by the way, we had mentioned the whole Forza Horizon and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Talked to my brother; he's already played it. He loves it. Okay, good. Um, and he's playing Heat. He says it's really good. Oh, okay, good. I- I've heard. I just heard he was, and it had uh, a good soundtrack. And- Good, 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 good. So let me see. Um, I've got my review uh, for another game, but um, you go ahead and do your Humble Bundle, and we'll come back around to that. Okie dokie. So Humble Bundle's holding two very strong things right now. One, Well, actually, three, I guess. One is their uh, Humble Games charity sale. Uh, games that were made or produced by uh, Humble Games is basically on a discount, and the more you buy, the more you save. Um, This one involves Temtem, which is a Pokemon-like game that kind of got a good nod from those at uh, Game Freak, those who created Pokemon, and said, you know what, you you guys are having an open-world, multiplayer, full-facet, forage type of game. You guys have fun. Sure, you guys are ripping us off, but have fun. Uh, another one, uh, One Step from Eden, a very interesting card-like game, and I put that term lightly, look it up yourself. It, It's a mind meld, and I'm not going to try and explain it. <laughs> uh, Void Bastards, Quincy and I went through it. It's a roguelite game that adds a little bit of elements of FTL with first-person shooting. Forager, a, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. You're a forager going on mild quests into dungeons, and it's a bit of a dungeon crawly game. Wizards of Wizard of Legend, um, another little bit of a dungeon crawly game where you combine powers to make more interesting powers, so on and so forth. Them's Fighting Herds, My Little Pony, but in a very, very good fighter. Uh, Crying Sons, I don't know anything about, but I, from what I'm looking at, it looks like a, a hexagonal type of game. More strategy, not my cup of tea. Uh, Staxel, a... Uh, what do they call it? A, it's not pixel. It's a voxel, or sort the of. The hell is a voxel? Voxel is like Minecraft. Everything's blocks. Like it's, oh, okay, it's, it's gotcha. Like the art style. Um, it does have an online multiplayer. It's basically a village simulator. It's basically a more interesting Harvest Moon, if you will, because you basically farm and you sell things. You get cows. You go exploring uh you have villagers that you can check in on it's it's a very simple game still in early access still going oh wait a minute i take that back it just got its full release not too too long ago uh slay the spire uh that one's a card game i will recommend any day of the god dang week it will suck you in for a long time uh wander song you play a bard that sings colors in a sense and those colors react to uh allow you to either progress in certain ways or uh close off one door open another it's a very interesting puzzle that involves color so not for quincy and, yeah that that's a bit of an issue yeah as i i think they might have a colorblind mode now do not quote me um and then the last one the occupation i don't know nothing about this one this one i've never seen before but from what i'm reading your role is to uncover evidence as a journalist by sneaking through restricted areas and questioning people on their actions through a series of one-on-one interviews. So I'm thinking it's like a uh, L.A. Noir, maybe? 
Um, a, we, a new LA Noir type style game would be nice, honestly, um, because I don't feel like Rockstar is ever going to get around to making another one for us. Oh, yeah. yeah. And a part of this little charity thing, they bumped out Aegis Defenders for free. So for the next two days, 14 hours, 25 minutes from 7.34 p.m. on the 14th Pacific Standard Time, you have that long to grab Aegis Defenders, which is a nice platforming uh, tower defense. With a little bit of uh, Studio Ghibli clothing, if you will. See, I like uh, tower defense games. Mm. Um, I, I'm really big into like the balloons. Um, I just don't like paying for them. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, so they did. They actually did a mashup with uh, Adventure Time that I've played on my phone. It's kind of fun. Oh, um, Adventure Time. Yeah, there's like an Adventure Time balloons mashup. It's a freebie for your for, for your phone. I I'll like definitely, it. I'll definitely look into that because I like Adventure Time. Uh, so basically, it's like a portal opens up and the balloons and the monkeys come through, and the monkeys are like, "Yeah, we gotta fight these fucking things because they're wrecking everything." And uh, the Adventure Time people are like, "Yeah, we agree. They're in our fucking way." <laughs> Jake, Obviously, Jake, without all the fucks and fucking, because it's Jake. Uh, Jake the uh, dog and Finn the human. The Finn the dog and Jake the human. The fun will never end. Adventure time. All right. Uh, back over to my other review. Um, it's not necessarily something I can review because I haven't played it, Honey. but I can tell you that it made a big enough of an impression on me that I fucking bought it, and I will have it when it comes out. The twenty sixth of this month, we are getting Mortal Kombat Eleven Aftermath. Um, it is a DLC that continues the story of Mortal Kombat 11 while also bringing in Robocop, uh, uh, Shiva and Fujin, um, as well as fatalities. Um, and, uh, what is it? The friendships that's bringing in friendships. I saw the trailer for the friendships. So I watched all the friendship trailers. I watched the Robocop trailer. I watched the story trailer. I just watched so much fucking shit for this. And it all just like hit me in my nostalgic spot big time. And I fucking spent $40 and I'm getting it. Oops. <laughs> That's my only issue is that it's not cheap. It's like a $40 add-on. Yeah, but hate it. I did. And they do have packs for people that don't have regular Mortal Kombat 11 or have Mortal Kombat 11 but don't have the DLCs that come uh, that you can get with 11. So like you can get Aftermath or you can get Aftermath and the DLCs or you get Aftermath the DLCs and 11 as a pack. Like they've got different buying options. Okay, good. So that comes out on the 26th. Um if you're a fan of early Mortal Kombat, I'm thinking this is going to be a lot of fun for all of us. Um the friendships, they only showed like 3 of them. They showed Noobs where he plays jump rope with himself. They showed Kano's where he's cooking shrimp on the barbie. And some um, hot dogs. And some hot dogs. And then who is the other one? That they did they... Sub-Zero and Scorpion. Yeah, that's right. Sub-Zero and Scorpion. Um, Scorpion I don't remember what there's for. To a big old teddy bear. That's right. Yeah, he pulls the big teddy bear on over. And Sub-Zero comes out uh, in a very, very old school uh, ice cream cart with the bicycle in the back. And he... Pulls out an ice cream and freezes it up. Which it's it's all some nice, fun, goofy things to enjoy. So, um, I have a couple more game news. You want to finish off gaming before we go into movies, or do you want to jump I, around? I still got more humble bundles. Oh shit! You still have more humble bundle? Yeah. I thought you were done. I'm sorry. Oh, humble bundles. <laughs> all right. A lot. Uh, so, beat us uh, over the head with some more Humble Bundle. Let's do it. 10-year <laughs> uh, anniversary for their Humble Indie Bundles. Uh, I've been buying these since Humble Indie Bundle number three. They still keep going. Uh, with this one, it is support of Dr. Spell Borders and Save the Children. Uh, and also the Crisis Text Line. That's the major point that I would like to get across. They already have, at the $1 mark, they already have me, because Hotline Miami is one of my favorite video games of all time. But they added in uh, Beat Cop and Dust Force DX, a nice little platforming cleanup game. At the Beat the Average, at right th this moment, uh, is $6.78. You get Moonlighter and got a Roboto, as well as more games that are going to be coming out in four days, six, four days and 16 hours from this point. Uh, and then at 15 bucks, you get fucking Starbound. And then a very, very strange game that 
I will talk about in two seconds. But Starbound for 15 bucks is already a great deal, and you get everything before that, as well as even more in four days. Now. Big breath. <laughs> Hypnospace Outlaw. I want to talk about this for just two seconds. Take 1995. Well, we'll say 1995. You were, okay. you were just barely around, right? Yeah, I was around for about two years. You were around for two years. You you don't have any recollection of computers in that time. Probably but not. Macs in that time were very, very simplistic. They were pretty much a... you get it, it was a mouse with only one button, and it was pretty much a point and click, and then you would have to click and hold if you wanted a menu. It was very much uh, a retro feel, now thinking about it, but it's... Take that aspect... Turn yourself into a cop that is of future, but also you have the internet at your disposal, and, oh boy, it is, it's so strange to try and figure out how to discuss Hypnospace Outlaw. It's an an internet simulator, while you're trying to, like, evade negative things like viruses or otherwise, but you're also trying to do your job of being a enforcer police dude. Enforcer police dude. Yeah, I don't know how to really push it. This is weird. This is very, <laughs> this is very irregular. But Which very... brings me up also to a, to a topic. Don't let me forget to bring up the topic of time travel when you're done with this. Copy. Uh, but I'm excited to see what comes out in the next four days, because... Whenever they do anything that says more will come in this time, they don't hold back. They hit you. They say, here's your, here's the good stuff. Oh, also, here's more good stuff and hit you again. Uh, you thought we were only going to put one cherry on the Sunday? No, there's two, bitch. <laughs> no, there's ten. Uh, okay, well, maybe now we're pushing it. <laughs> um, but other than that, I recommend getting it. It supports charity, supports the developers straight out. Do it. Another one that I think you'd like, however is Joe Hill's Lock and Key Bundle. Okay, so I have not read all of Lock and Key, so this does speak to me. Um, plus, I like Joe Hill. Obviously, I like his dad, Stephen King. And I like comic books. So, I mean, I don't see a, a lose anywhere in this scenario. Yeah. Um, the, beat, the Beat the Average... Or no, I take that back. It's a three-tier. It is 1, 8, and 15. And it ranges from all of their works, from Joe Hill all the way down. You get... Lock and key, dying is easy. The cape and shadows, shadow show for $1 just to get you started. $8 kind of bumps you up a little bit with more of the future of it. And dying is easy, road rage, um, thumbprint, uh, tales from the dark side. Let's go $15. Guess what? A lot more lock, lock and key, the cape, dying is easy, and wraith. Okay, so I haven't read Dying is Easy or Wraith. Um, I've read a little bit of The Cape, though, and The Cape was pretty good. Um, and just in case you like are very skeptical about these, they give you a little previews just so you can take a peek at it just to see if it is your cup of tea. But uh, with Lock and Key, um, I remember catching a snippet not too, too long ago. It looked interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of... I might, I might put eight bucks toward it just so I can get started. And as said, it always goes to charity. This one does the Book Industry Charitable Foundation and uh, Donors Choose, which is uh, uh, Stephen Colbert's. It's one of his major um, donation pushes. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm, I, God, I love Humble Bundle. God, I love Humble Bundle. All right, we need to move on before he starts making love to his monitor. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, too late. <laughs> uh, that's it. That's all I have for Humble Bundle as far as, for now. I mean, they they do a lot of really good work, and they always put out some, some really good hitters there. Um, oh, yeah. I, I have to really fight myself on not blowing all my money on Humble Bundle, though, because I know it's charitable, but I have to remind myself that I still have bills to pay. <laughs> so... Uh, from there, uh, what do you, where do you want to go from there? Do you want to uh, move into... What are you to talk about uh, time travel? Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, so um, the, that game just made me think about it. I always asked Lauren, like, if we could time travel, where would we go? And we both kind of agreed we'd probably catch the end of the 80s and then live through the 90s. 
Um, and I realized the other day, it's amazing, right? If, if you could time travel, go back in time and, and experience some of the, you know, moments of your life that you, you know, have such a nostalgic feel for things that you really like, stuff like that. But I realized the one problem We'd go back in time to the 80s and 90s, and high-speed internet is no longer a thing. Oh yeah, <laughs> you would you would have to you would have to deal with the entertainment of that time. You would not have the video game systems we have now. You would get pong, and you'd be happy. I mean, granted, arcades would be a thing again. Yeah, and I could go and enjoy some arcades. But like, could you imagine dealing with dial-up again? No, no, I can't. <laughs> we are literally dealing with high-speed internet just to make sure this podcast works. So uh, it was just a, a thing, and Lauren was like, "Yeah, everyone would think we have rage problems because we'd be screaming at the computers more than already people do <laughs> with how slow high speed internet is." Could you imagine trying to download a photo? <laughs> oh my god! And someone picks up the phone. You son of a bitch! Yeah, so it, it was just an interesting thought process that I had the other day, and so that guy doing internet stuff on an old ass Mac made me think of that. So. But um, do, so uh, gaming. Do we want to continue gaming? Yeah, let's, and let's, then let's kill all we'll... the gaming. Let's kill all game. Right. So we just had an update to Fallout seventy six. I feel like it did a lot. You're still skeptical. I understand. What if I told you there's another update coming? All right, all right. Talk to me. I mean, it's not going to persuade me to play it because I I feel like there are better games for me to d- dive into. Right. That's now. fine. That's fine. The game will continue to be there, but they're going to start doing seasonal rewards, right. which for an online-based game is a good thing. Yes, it is. And they're officially going to introduce the Brotherhood of Steel into 76. Okay, okay, okay. Now you are now you said something that made me interested, but I want to know, thing is, this is, uh, where is this, Boston? Uh, West Virginia. Oh, that's right, West Virginia. Okay, Boston was Fallout 4. Uh yeah. Um so the difference between all of the Brotherhood of Steels. We'll say see did you play one and two? The OGs? I, I know the story, I didn't get to play them, but okay. I know the story. The Brotherhood and Steel of one, two, and three were very forward. They had great mentality, they had the their mindset was locked the fuck down. New Vegas made them look like fucking a bunch of pussies that just hid and was well, just waiting. That's a- that that's the thing that I feel like because I know I know where you're going with this and I and I've heard a lot of people talk about the variations of it and I and I think the thing you have to remind yourself of is that if, if you're in, in New Vegas they are they're hiding and and I agree and then you've got the two factions in three where you've got the outsiders who are there for the technology and you got the other ones who are like kind of policing things and doing the stuff with the library and whatnot the enclave and, and then you have the enclave as well I forgot about the enclave and and what you kind of have is once they got further out away from themselves, because New Vegas isn't exactly down the street from where one and two happened. It's, it's close because it's Nevada and California border, but, um, and also the Arizona border, a very confusing map. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, but it's this thing where it's like, they kind of, uh, as they get, it seems like as they get further away from the ones that are in one and two, they kind of start doing their own thing and forget they're supposed to be a unit from the Brotherhood. Yeah, and what I if they have the technology, okay, they do have the technology to get uh, what do they call it, uh, recon signals out. Mm-hmm. I'm just curious to, to know why they didn't, and then they were like, "Oh, we have Vela, uh, Verlibird, Verlibird. What is what is their helicopters? Verlibird? I don't, I don't remember. Even honestly, so, they had they had that support, and I was like, okay, they had it the whole time." Why didn't yeah. they use it? Like, the New Vegas ones boggled my fucking mind. And then you go into Fallout 4, and I'm like, okay, they're starting to get it back. But then it's a sense of unjust righteousness that the one in the giant fucking uh, dirigible. And I'm just like, where did you, where, why do you feel this way? Why do you honestly have that hierarchy of my way is the right way? You know, if if they can't abide by my logistics, they aren't allowed to exist. And he wanted the Minutemen gone. I was like, huh, what, what, the Minutemen are just trying to fucking survive. 
it's this whole putting people in a position of power thing. I mean, they, they kind of lose their shit. Um, but also combined with the fact that, you know, the people in that region, the guy that's running things in that region, they're all just so worried about synths. Well, uh, that's and the, just so fucking scared of them. That's the other other thing is dance follows along with the ideology of just, hey, you, you're weak. You should stay weak. Don't don't worry about it. Just get out of the way then. And I'm like, dance. You're you're a brotherhood of steel. You you protect and honor. You you are that of which will be there when nothing is left. Like I don't it boggles my mind that they screwed with Brotherhood of Steel so much. So I'm very curious to see what Fallout seventy six will bring to the Brotherhood of Steel. I'm trying to remember which one Dance is. Uh Dance is the big boy in the power armor you run into in uh, one of the very first cities, if you're heading... Yeah, at the police station? Yeah, and he's there did, trying to defend it. Did you finish his storyline? Uh, n- no, I killed him. I did you not. You shouldn't have done that. As soon as, I, as soon as he started getting away from what I respected of him, I was like, okay, boozak. Okay. Do you want a spoiler? Yeah, hit me. Uh, warning he, spoiler. <laughs> warning spoiler for Fallout 4, uh, Paladin Dance. Uh, he's a synth. What? I do believe, if I remember correctly. Hold the fu- hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He's he a doesn't fu- know it. Oh, well, of course, some. Well, uh, in uh, Fallout Three, there's a synth that doesn't really acknowledge it until the very end, and then in Fallout Four, there's like um, I don't even I, I call it an event because it's not really a quest. You run into two guys arguing because they're the same person. One guy's like, wait, 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 don't do it. And then the other one's like, but I'm the human, he's the synth. Oh, uh, eh. And then they're both trying just to, to fight it out. And it's interesting to denote that synths don't even know they're synths. Some of them. I, I think he's, uh, if I remember correctly, he, he turns out to be a synth. Okay. Um, and then, like, the leader of the Brotherhood wants him dead because of that. Well, I, I blew up the entire thing, so I don't give a dang. Um... But yeah, so back to the seventy six update. Sorry, okay. Yeah, uh, okay. I, I let you. I mean, you had a very good point, and I understand your your frustration. So it will be nice to see where they go with the Brotherhood in this. Yeah. So um, I don't think you're gonna necessarily see the Brotherhood you want, but I think you are gonna see the internal struggle. So they are calling it the twenty twenty roadmap, and they released the whole image, which is actually really cool. Uh, introducing season uh, seasons, summer uh, will be uh, the first uh, section. Um, they've actually got this cool little board game looking thing. You're gonna have legendary perks. You're gonna have public uh, teams. You're gonna have colossal problems. Uh, so new legendary boss events. Um, find teams uh, with ease for the public teams. Uh, community challenges. Uh, uh, da, 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 uh, meet week event. I don't know what that even means. Uh, fa- uh, fashion. Uh, I have no idea. Um, uh, my dyslexia. Not. Thank you. My dyslexia was getting me hard there. Yeah. Uh, returns. Um, and then you're going to have fall. You're going to have one wastelander for all. Um, you're going to have steel dawn, which is a, a new uh, quest line. You're going to have daily ops, so extra things to earn, uh, rewards and stuff. Okay. Uh, you're going to have a season two refresh, and you're going to have new bomb drop events. Uh, let me let me pause you right there. Do you know what Fosnacht means? No. Okay. At first, I thought it was pastry because I was trying to like revel back in my in my old German days. Um, but Fosnacht is donut. And I'm looking at the image, and I, I I'm beginning to think about it, and I'm like. What is this event? <laughs> and I'm well, looking it says at... return, so... I mean... But it looks like a person. Like, you can see eyebrows and a mustache, or is it a forest? Like, this doesn't make sense. Eh. Okay, so there's an actual thing. It's a Fosnacht event. Um, oh, it's a mask. So it's oh. these, these masks from something. Uh, from, like, another culture's events. Interesting. Um, so there's Soldier Mask, Man Mask, Toothy Man Mask, uh, Witch Mask, Jester Mask, Skull Mask, Giant Mask, Owl Mask, and there's supposed to be more of them. Mask Mask? Um, so the next event will hit, for that will hit March 19th and, uh, March 25th. Okay. Um, and then we've got Fractured Steel. This is where your Brotherhood's coming in. Uh, that'll be the winter, uh, the winter set. So more perk, uh, perk loadouts. So, um... You're going to get... Here we go. I can zoom in. 
easy, easily customize, uh, customize builds, uh, camp shelters, build, in, uh, build in instanced interiors. What does that even mean? Um, I'm sure instanced means that they're already full of things. Um, like, so, oh, so like pre-builds that you don't have to design a room each time, I guess. Correct. I mean, correct. You already have blueprints, though. I guess, and then I don't, I don't know. know. I, I I I was neutral when you started building up the camp. I'm like, I'll just go collect supplies around the city area right nearby. Like I was <laughs> I was already over building. Like, if um, build, I'll play a building game. I, but I mean, I, I build, a building hit big in four. People really got into building big in four. So I did the pre prefabs. I was just like, put that there, put that there. I'm gone. I, yeah. Put me back in a gun position. Um, expeditions. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was I was going to mention that exact thing. Expeditions. So it says new repeatable missions. I'm thinking it's just raid bosses, things that you can do over and over and over. And I'm like, that's neat and all, but that should have been day one. Well, I mean, they have some now. This is going to be new ones. Okay. So they're going to bring new ones in because there are already things like the farm and stuff like that. And I do believe you can even repeat um, all like mi- uh, like missions you've completed, like storyline wise. Oh, um, season three refresh, uh, new daily ops and holiday scorched. So scorched are going to have like Santa hats and shit like that. That's cute. Uh, while also doing this, we already have the weight la- wastelander thing, which gives new main quests, new character and gear, new human NPCs and new, uh, re- uh, reputation system. Um, so it says winter, uh, later this year, the brotherhood of steel returns to Appalachia and search for new technology. So it's, they're going back for the technology again, which is good. That's mm-hmm. kind of the core purpose of the brotherhood uh the continuation of the story arc started in steel dawn uh which one was steel dawn uh, that's uh the fall that's the quest line in, in fall so, okay one season prior okay okay we'll introduce uh new npcs quests and uh, com- uh companions. companions sorry my mouse was over it. uh to the west virginia wasteland so i mean it sounds like the brotherhood doing what they're goal is what the outcasts were doing because they didn't agree with what the other brotherhood brotherhood was doing in three um and what you kind of wanted from the new vegas ones rather than them hiding and not doing anything i I do agree with you that the brotherhood's been kind of fucked with a lot um and i always did like the outsiders um and three a lot more because i agreed with them their job is not to police the wasteland and that's kind of what started happening and what the other factions started doing and you what you see in four where it's like I'm going to decide what deser- what deserves to live and die. And it's like, that's not the point of view. So the fact that these ones are looking to do technology, I like, and I feel like that's getting back to the roots you want. Like so. the, en- the Enclave wanted to be a little bit more stingy about it. They wanted to say, technology to those who can handle it. Meanwhile, you have Brotherhood of Steel, that's technology for everyone, because we want to better the world because oops bombs drop but at the same time we want we want to continue to excel technology well and then at the same time you also had the enclave being very much the terrible people that they were because they were the ones that also wanted to kill all the super mutants whether they were good or not well they they were abomination i can i can see the idea of getting rid of super mutants because well super mutants are kind of assholes like they they enjoy the taste of human flesh yeah, but think about the good ones you've met. I do like Fox. Fox was a very good one. Fox, what was it? Uncle Rufus? Uncle Uncle, Uncle something. Uncle something, and then you got the granny one in uh, New Vegas. Oh, the one that's like addicted to the uh, being invisible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've got that whole that whole group of them up on the mountain because they were all good up there. Um, and then you also had the terrible one that took over Black Mountain Radio. I so I, uh, I I know who it is. I just don't remember them. Yeah, I, I mean it's not important, but uh, you know that's so uh, that's kind of the thing where it's like I didn't like the Enclave wanting to kill off all the super mutants and whatnot, and I, I didn't. I don't think I killed the computer president in that, but I definitely didn't poison all the super mutants. Yeah. So yeah, fall, uh, that's the Fallout updates we can see coming. Um, next in gaming, unless you have more gaming, I have. A, uh, a little, I mean, I'm. I've got one major gaming that I'm super fucking hyped for. Well, um, real quick before we get to that, I'll do a couple small things. Okay. So you mentioned GTA was free on Epic Game Store. 
What you didn't mention is it crashed their online store. People were so excited. I didn't know if I wanted to talk about that because it was, it, I mean, it's already back up. It's already working. Yeah, it's back up, but 500 errors uh, and uh, or launcher crashing and all things like that. A slow loading. It's just amazing to me that a game that's been out this long that we've all played, we all own, still caused this much hype. Yeah, like that. That's just crazy to me. And then uh, the last two game things I have. So uh, Vincent Zampella uh, talks that Titanfall, oh, there will be no more. We're not getting another Titanfall. I'm okay with it. However, he teases a surprise from Respawn uh, for EA Play in June. So, um... And yes, I understand. Go away, ads. Damn it. <laughs> so it's a uh, so Respawn's boss hints at new shooter that will be coming out for the studio's tenth anniversary. Um, so I don't know what to make of this personally. Uh, but if it's coming from the people that did Titanfall, it could potentially be good because you like Titanfall. I uh, was yeah. I haven't played it, but I've heard really good things. I don't see a reason not to. Be a little excited, but I will continue to be cautious. Uh, he says the attention is for them to have their own identity away from EA and all that. So, okay, uh, all right, I, I, I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, I, I like that because I mean EA does have a bad identity right now, also. So, here's the um, they they managed to shake all that off. Yeah, I mean they kind of did it to themselves, but yeah. And I also want to clear up some false news that's going around. There will not be microtransactions in Cyberpunk. It's not a thing. They said that you will be able to buy things in the game, and people thought that meant microtransactions, and they lost their fucking minds. There's not going to be microtransactions. I th- they were talking that like you're in the game, you'll be able to purchase things, you'll have money, your character will make money in the game type of thing. Um, so, d- don't Go through and, you know, rip down your cyberpunk posters and cancel your pre-orders because you heard microtransactions. It's not true. And I'm glad glad for that. Oh, no, I'm glad for it, too. I I just, I I hate when I see something start picking up because someone misunderstood something and people start accepting that as fact. So, um, and then my last gaming thing, um, at least I think it's my last gaming thing. uh, Xbox executive Jay Allard. Allard? Allard. Uh, is joining Intellivision to help launch the new Amico console. I do we need another console? That's Does someone really know. think they can take on all these other consoles? I don't know. Uh, they announced that we are thrilled to add such an amazing industry legend to our team. Uh, Jay's experience, like a minded vision and leadership in the technology and video game industry, is a a visionary, as a visionary product designer and gamer will further strengthen the executive leadership team and innovation legacy of Intellivision. Um, they announced the Amico in 2018 uh, and its design goals. I don't know. I, I, I don't think we need another console. I concur. We're, we're already oversaturated and PC is slowly still dominating. Switch yeah. is right there behind. Because holy shit, the you can't even fucking get them right now. Yeah, I, I would, I wouldn't mind one right now. I would love one. I would go buy one right now, but I have the money to do it but for once in my life, and I can't. Um, the Amigo is currently up for pre-order on Fig. Uh, what's it called again? Amigo. Amico. A M I C O. Amico. Um, it's uh, it's up on Fig, which is a crowdfunding platform. Um, the campaign went live uh, in April and is offering a hundred dollar refundable deposit towards the console. So basically, if you invest, you like, to help it get off the ground, they're going to knock part of your investment off the price of the console. Um, the thing is, is that investment starts at two hundred and forty nine. So you're putting two hundred and forty nine dollars to help get this thing launched, and then you're going to get a hundred dollars off of the console. Oh, um, backers crazy. have made 12,788 deposits and contributed more than $96,000 uh, in investments uh, at a total of nearly $1.37 million in combined funding. 
I mean, it, the design looks like an old Intellivision, which is nice. It adds a bit of retrospect. It has an LED screen on it, like an, uh, a, a cell phone would. I just, I don't know if, yeah, I don't know if this is a good idea. If it had some major gimmick that made me go, that is unique, that is fun, I want that, okay. But as far as going back and saying, oh, hey, you know, those old overlays that you used to put on in the front of your in television so you can hit those very specific buttons, yeah, there, there's how you do it. It has a little tiny gyroscope at the bottom that you turn. I was like, okay, it's got the, the, the familiar thing of old school. It's trying to appeal to those yeah. who had it. But, but, I mean, all it is is you're going to play this on this. You're playing it on the monitor on this thing, right? You're not playing it on a computer? You know, both. You're, uh, you're or, or, I mean, not. I mean, not on television. Is it going to be on your TV as well? It's going to be on your TV. Okay, so that's a little bit nicer. Um, and it is. They're bringing back the retro games. They're bringing back Earthworm Jim, um, uh, Astro Smash. Uh, like it's got games. It's got plenty of games I want to play. Shark Shark. All kinds of stuff. The problem is the fact that you're telling me that this thing's going to be expensive enough that a $239 fucking donation gets me $100 off of it, and then there's still going to be something for me to pay? Yeah. How fucking expensive is this thing going to be when all it basically is is a glorified phone? Two glorified phones. Two, two glorified phones. Two. Um, with, I could do what this is doing on an Apple TV. Yeah. And yes, I know an Apple TV is going to be way more expensive than this, but an Apple TV is also going to do way more than this does. Like I'm looking at the games on this right now, and I'm like... Yeah, no, it's not pushing me to... If there was something major, I said, I need something 100%. Uh, well, and then to top it off, they end the page with products our teams helped create, produce, market, and or been directly involved in launching. And they use big titles such as World of Warcraft, the PlayStation Spider-Man, the original Xbox, uh, Madden, and, uh, Madden uh, Football, uh, Lego... Guitar Hero, Pokemon, Dragon Ball Z, Mattel, Tetris, and so on. Which is great! But none of this is that. Yeah, none of these are consoles. I feel like they would have been better off to do a phone-controlled thing like Jackbox is. They would have been better off to release something on console, on an Xbox, on a Switch, on a PlayStation, and make it phone-controlled like Jackbox is. Make your games playable do the Intellivision games like they want to on your phone connected through your console rather than trying to convince us that buying another console is worth it. Yeah, no, I I, I was trying to figure out ways of being like, hey, you know, they're, 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 they got nothing. They have nothing. You're, you're asking way too much for this. I can tell you already. I don't even know the price, and I can tell you already that if 100 bucks is uh, only going to be taken off of it, isn't even going to count towards the actual... Like uh, it's it's obviously more than a hundred bucks. That's already a problem. Yeah, like I could see doing two hundred flat for both of these, but then again, I already feel like that's too much. That is, it's too much. So, Just uh, to pre-order how much? Uh, okay, so here's the cool thing: two forty nine ninety nine. Oh, okay. There's the price: two forty nine ninety nine. And then uh, the GameStop exclusive purple to uh, Galaxy Gradient, which is. Uh, GameStop exclusive is two ninety nine ninety nine. So three hundred bucks. No, I'm not doing it. There's no way. No. I what? like it, it. I like the concept of bringing back these old games. I was actually just talking the other day that I would love to see a new Earthworm Jim game or at least a re render of an old one. But I'm not willing to pay two hundred and forty three hundred dollars. And that's the other thing two hundred and forty. To get the hundred dollars put towards it while in being an investor, you're talking that you had to put two hundred thirty nine dollars down, and you only get the hundred. And a hundred, yeah, a hundred of that goes towards it. So that leaves with another hundred and forty nine. So that's three. That's over five hundred fucking dollars almost. That's just under five hundred dollars just to get a two hundred and fifty dollar console when it could potentially release if it releases. Wait, yeah. that doesn't make a goddamn like a sense. No, I'm out. <laughs> it's not yeah. happening. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I mean, I like its design. I like how it looks. I like how it could potentially feel. It's just nothing. There is nothing that makes me want it. No. I'm done. Good day. So, you go ahead and hit your gaming news, and then we'll top off, uh, then we'll kind of do a break between gaming and movie slash television. 
with some good old shoe news. Um, and go from there. We got ourselves Evo 2020! I'm so hyped. So, Evo 2020 is back on, but... In a new way. In a new way. It is online-based. Uh, they have all the brackets already set up. They're getting uh, some preliminaries. Guess what? All those preliminaries, online as well. They are making sure that Evo 2020 is the safest they can be. Because Evo, Evo ever since 99, has been the most safest it could potentially be. This year, it's going to be online only. Uh, it's got a bunch of new... Uh, tournament sets for, uh, we just talked about it, uh, them's fighting Herds, uh, Killer Instinct, Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath, uh, da 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 uh, Skullgirls, Encore, and I think, like, I think, uh, uh, Street Fighter Five. Okay. And, and, uh, they even said that they might have room for more if more is preceded up until the end of Jul- middle of July. So we might see Samurai Showdown, we might see, uh, Soul Calibur Six. we might see... Something else. Some other fighting game, just as long as there is an, enough interest and enough, you know, uh, what do they call it? Clout? And they get a lot of people gathered up for it. But uh, I, th- I, think, I think that's the right word. Like, enough heat. We'll go with heat. How's that? Yeah, we'll go with heat. Um, Under Night Inbirth, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, Tekken 7, and Grand Blue are kind of on the background. And then Super Smash Brothers Ultimate has been knocked off the roster until further notice. So Interesting. Hopefully, hopefully Smash can get back up. Um, that's all. Uh, that's it for that. Uh, it says, oh, I take that back. Evo Online kicks off July 4th. So, way to celebrate. I mean, this, this is cool. I, I, I'm down for this. Oh, yeah. I'm also down for it. Uh, Mad Cats has put up a lot of money to ensure that, you know, stay safe. Here's here's some new clean materials if you need more cl- clean materials. Uh, there's no See, vent- now I just feel like an asshole because I can't even think of the last time I bought a Mad Cats product. <laughs> they've actually, okay, they've actually, they've had a moment of time where they were less than stellar, but they've they've gotten back into it. Oh, where- I'm not saying anything against them. I'm just like, they're out there making this happen. I'm sitting here going, shit, I don't think I own a Mad Cats product in this house anymore. <laughs> uh, if I can get a fight stick for Mad Cats right now, I would. Like, I want to fight. I need a fight. I need to get back into it. But aside from all that, I'm happy to see Evo is back on, baby. I fucking I'm always down for some fighting games. So your other two news stories I've got here in front of me. Um, let's talk about this demo you sent me. Uh oh, the uh, Ghost Runner. Yeah. Okay. The only reason why I sent it uh, is because it feels it feels good. It looks like it feels good. So now here, that was what I was thinking too. And what I noticed was we just talked about a game. And I, let me scroll back up to the top here. We just talked about a game like last week, week before called Bright Memory Infinite. This feels like that, but better. It does. It really does. Because Bright is, uh, what was it? A tech demo of making sure that, you know, it, it runs on the Xbox One X. This, this feels like um, uh, Katana Zero. But in a 3D platform. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. Like, it looks so good. I like it. I, I like the way this looks. I like the way this feels. If, if you guys want to check it out, IGN's got the full demo um, on their YouTube page. Um, go check it out. It, it's what, what was it? Uh, four minutes long? Five, 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 five and some change. 546. 546, 547. And you got a cool robot hand and stuff like that. I mean, I think you're completely a robot if it, but I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, and it's very forgiving on its platforming. Like, I'm watching this guy, he's hitting the low end of wall running. Like, it's it tries to stay around, like, wall jumping, wall running, uh, climbing up uh, ledges, yeah, sliding. It, it he keeps to... hitting his jumps wrong, and it keeps scaring the crap out of me because I think he's going to die. But then I realize they're not being, like, oh, you have to hit it in the specific sweet spot. It's letting him hit a little low. And it... it uh, the dash mechanic is so clean. Um, it it seems like it is a uh, Hotline Miami style where one hit, you're down. Um, so it is going to be rather uh, punishing. Well, and it it is a game that gives you the ability to control time in a sense. like it, Not necessarily controlling time, but you definitely slow things down. So I understand it being one of those ones that you're super squishy. Hopefully it's not a one hit. Hopefully it's two hits. It's three hits, something like that. 
But even if it is one hit, I mean, get good is basically what you're going to have to say to this one because they're giving you the tools to be able to be this insane samurai sword, katana sword, wielding crazy fucker. Oh, we, <laughs> you know? We, we don't know too much about this story, I'm afraid. But no. uh, it, it it looks entertaining. It looks like something I'm I'm going to look into a little bit more. I want to I wanna know what the hell I'm getting into because with Katana Zero, it has a divulge into an actual problem like you are uh mild spo- very mild spoilers it kind of does it in the trailer but you're addicted to something that allows you to have memories it's a, a negative drug that basically allows you to have memories because you can't do them naturally and with that you get a sense for this character who is just divul like devolving very very steadily they're not they're not themselves and well the only thing that you know is to go out there and do your job essentially whether you know it's right or wrong it's all you know yeah and i i like that kind of kind of story this one i don't know if you went all the way in the trailer but you gain um a doom eternal hook shot yeah, I've seen the hook shot. Um, it's kind of cool. This guy's he's done some stuff with it, but he he doesn't he hasn't really used it too much in a way that, I, and maybe it's just the the mechanics of the game. You don't get to quite use it the Doom internal way, where it's like it's not just a hook shot; it's also a weapon or something like that. This one seems like it's very singular. It's meant to be your hook shot, and that's it. Um, it definitely does look like a, there's a story here. I think the one thing I'm noticing about this that I'm not a big fan of is the world doesn't feel like a lived-in world. Like, yeah, things are dirty, there's some graffiti and stuff, but it's just, it feels like, it's just almost like it's empty building or whatnot. Yeah, it's kind of- it feels like a back alley. It doesn't exactly give you uh, a, a world of actual. It gives you this false, hey, there's a guard over here, hey, there's a guard yeah. over here. And I mean, yeah. when they show the actual cinematic thing, it looks like a lived-in world. You're seeing cars flying around. You're seeing people in the buildings and stuff like that. Um, you see your actual character rather than just his uh, hands. Um, they do this little thing where like, they show like a photo of some people and stuff like that. Probably the going to be the motivation, lost a loved one or something like that. But I don't know. The world just doesn't feel very alive to me. It feels like maybe you're already in the dead in a dead world when you're starting this. Um, and that's probably not the feel they're going for. And I think that's the one downside here. But um, I'll let you continue with the, with the rest of your stuff. I just wanted to focus on that one because I had noticed the connection almost between this and our, our, pre- our previous episodes uh, oh. game. Oh, yeah. That, that was a good connection, though. Uh, I wouldn't have thought of that. Uh, so the other game I want to talk about, it just got an announcement not too, too long ago. Uh, Devolver Digital and, uh, Ronnie Mo? Ronnie Mo. Uh, they came out with a little beat-em-up called Blightbound. I am already down for this. The art style already got me. Uh, the mild story that it kind of told, it, it was already there. I was like, cool, neat. Um... The gameplay looks like an old 90s beat-em-up. And I was like, cool. I, I'm i here for this one. It's a nice three-player dungeon crawler-ish. Uh, but it's in a beat-em-up style. You can charge up mana attacks. Uh, it, it opens up a lot of ideas. I'm just... I'm excited. That's all I wanted I, to mention. It, it looks kind of cool. It looks interesting. Um, it it kind of reminds me of the fact that, you know, I had mentioned earlier that me and Lauren had both played... Um, the new Streets of Rage. The one thing that was bothering me about that was, well, it's like, oh, you know, up to four people, cool. I mean, her can play. We can play on the couch. Does that split screen because of the style of the game? Yada yada yada. We keep fucking hitting each other. <laughs> oh yeah, and that's driving me nuts. <laughs> and we're both doing it. It's not just one of us or the other. We're we're both doing it. I'm like, holy fuck, we've got to stop doing this. <laughs> um, she's actually pretty good though. Um, and, and not to like undersell Lauren or anything. Just she plays turn based games. So, me experiencing what it's like to play an actual beat 'em up type of thing with Lauren has been actually really cool. Seeing her actually do it. So, when I hear that there's another beat her up, beat 'em up that's a three player thing, I sit there and get excited, and I think, "Ooh, more stuff to play together." <laughs> yeah, and this uh, one looks super nice. Yeah, and then you should have at least one more game that I know of that I'm not necessarily excited for, 
but I get the excitement for it. Oh, oh, uh, Paper Mario. Yeah. Um, Paper, Paper Mario and the Origami King is number seven in the Paper Mario trilogy. I haven't played any of them. Uh, I did one and Thousand Year Door, and I liked them both. But I did hear that, like, Sticker Star and the other one, uh, Super Paper Mario, weren't that great. But I'm I'm going to hold... I'm going to hold my reservations. I mean, I, I like Paper Mario as a concept. Yeah. Having Mario already be a silent protagonist, in a sense, and just doing the simple go help the princess, even though the princess in the Paper Mario world is very much a... their own entity. They can do things themselves. I always kind of liked that uh, playing Super Mario 2, and I know it's, you know, a lot of it comes from the fact that it originally wasn't supposed to be... Um, the Mario game, uh, that Peach was a playable character. You weren't out to rescue her. You were out to fight bad shit, and you could do it as her. And spoilers for a almost 30-year-old game. It was all a dream. Well, I mean, that one was all a dream. Three is a stage play. Oh, yeah. So, they, they, they take some very creative liberties with the Mario universe, and it's in a good way. Um, since I've never played them, does this follow the same kind of scheme that Mario Sunshine, Mario 64 followed, where you're jumping through things and repeating worlds over and over again? Or is it more like the other Mario games, where it's like you, you're moving through the world as you go? A uh, little of both. Certain aspects, a little of both, but here's the thing. It's turn-based combat. I knew about the turn-based combat. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, it's very... Well, it's active turn-based, because there are some things you got to, like... In order to do a little bit more damage, you gotta hold left on the thumbstick and wait for it to hit the green light, and then when you let go, it does the most amount of damage. Yeah. Uh, there's mild things like that. Uh, I I don't know how to really... It's it's basically a current age Super Mario RPG. Which I was gonna bring up next. Do you think because of the success of Paper Mario, that's why we never got another Super Mario RPG? No... I think that's kind of Square's thing, because Square Enix was the one behind it. And yeah. And with Square Enix kind of saying, "Screw Nintendo, we work with did or yeah, we work with Disney now." Um. I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know because Super Mario RPG, mm-hmm. Square Enix, Nintendo's first like major, eh, one of their few crossovers at the time. It's a 20-hour game. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. Yeah. Then you go over to Paper Mario, the first one. You can do it maybe eight hours. So you feel like the idea of 17 hours, SNES, lower graphics, extra completionist stuff uh, versus extra completionist stuff. You only You still only get eight hours of gameplay total, maybe, if you're, you know... Going at a brisk pace, you feel that's the same. No, and and I think that there's this thing where where Nintendo's failed, and I know it's weird to hear Nintendo's failed because like they've got the Switch, it's one of the fastest selling consoles, yada yada yada. Where I feel Nintendo has failed is they in certain things they've played it too safe. In certain aspects, they've stayed too close to certain ideas. While in other aspects, they're like, let's make the fucking Wii, and let's make the Switch, and come up with these insane co- uh, controllers, and insane concepts, and ways of playing that other people aren't doing, which is great. But they've got these properties that no one else owns that they're like, let's put out another Mario Tennis. Let's put out a Mario soccer game. Not another Mario RPG, because we don't want something that takes 20 hours. We want something that kids can play, and that people can beat, and feel like they beat it. And that that's the feel I get from Nintendo, and so I, I will say that the Square Enix platform was way different than everything else Nintendo is doing. And maybe you're right; maybe that's why they haven't gone on to do more. I was incorrect. I was vastly incorrect. It was uh, Mario, Super Mario Sunshine that I was originally thinking of. No, Paper Mario and Thousand Year Door, thirty hours each. Oh, okay. Well, then never mind. Yeah, uh, Super Mario Sunshine's... And to be fair, like I said, I had never played the Paper Mario games. I did play Sunshine, and I really liked Sunshine, but it suffered from what I felt 
Mario's kind of become this weird thing after 64 where it was like, let's jump through the uh, wall, uh, through the door, the, the painting, and repeat the same world over and over again, just each time doing a different task. And that's very quickly what Super Mario Sunshine became. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, it, it had the same exact feel as Mario 64, just uprendered. Yeah. Um... Other than that, it was an enjoyable game. I actually really liked that game. Uh, and, and so I, when they did, uh, and, and people are probably going to be like, what are you talking about? They've done all kinds of different things with their uh, with their games. And one of the big wing- ones people are going to bring up is going to be uh, Luigi's Mansion. And I absolutely loved the first Luigi's Mansion because it was so different while also being a property that I loved. But tell me, how long did we go from Luigi's Mansion to its sequel that wasn't even something they felt should get full console. They put it on the freaking 3DS. Uh, and then with the success of that went, oh, maybe we should do one for the Wii, uh, for the Switch. Like, the, the, let, me, let me check this 2001 out. Uh, 2013, so 12 years. 12 fucking years. Two consoles. Like, Luigi's Mansion was GameCube. Mm-hmm. You had the Wii and the Wii U... As well as a billion different versions of, you know, handheld. Before you decided it deserved a sequel. What the hell? And yeah, I know he got his his own platforming game, Luigi U and whatnot. But even that, I feel like he got the shaft. Because his uh, the weirdest thing about playing the, the Luigi Mario Brother game. The Luigi Brothers game. Uh, however you want to call it. Uh, your time limit on the maps is like cut in half. It's the weirdest thing. I, Nintendo does odd stuff. I don't know. I, I want them to keep doing stuff. I love things, you know, the, the things they do. They, they're doing very well by things when it comes to like Legends of Zelda and Legend of Zelda and stuff like that. But I just feel like the Mar- Mario property gets handled in such a weird way because I feel like they do want to stay something where it can keep children focused. Um, having never played Paper Mario, I obviously didn't know that there were 20, 30 hour games and I'm kind of glad they are and it actually makes me a little bit more interested in possibly playing them. So, um, I, just, I, would, I, just, I just want Smash. Yeah, I know you want Smash. Uh, that that all being said, I, I don't want people thinking I hate Nintendo because I actually really love Nintendo. Um, I've owned almost every Nintendo thing you can own for the most part, and I will probably continue to support them. Um, but sometimes I worry that they focus too much on the wrong parts. That's all. I, I, I don't want to see Nintendo die is my main thing. Uh, it, my anger comes out of love and worry. So. Um, but that's it for gaming, right? That is all I had for you. All right. I'll do your little sound effect. But up up shoe news. Fun fact. Uh, that's pre recorded, and we just put it in and post it. No, he does it live every time. Do it live every <laughs> time. Uh, I like. Bruce Lee. Do you like uh, Bruce Lee? Um, I don't like Bruce Lee. I fucking love Bruce Lee. He is probably one of the, the, the greatest as far as over-under, as yeah. far as being a, a great martial artist, great actor. If you great like person, from what I understand. Person. Um, um, I was a big... I was even a fan of Brandon without knowing, like, because, you know, I was a kid. I didn't know Brandon Lee was Bruce Lee's son. You know? I like Brandon Lee a lot, and then sadly he passed in a very fucked up uh, circumstances of an on on screen death. Um, but you yeah, know, Bruce Lee's amazing. Um, Enter the Dragon is one of my all time favorite movies. Speaking of which, we have here some Nikes that are reminiscent of that exact movie. So I'm looking at these; they're black and white. Mostly white. Red. Where's the red? Um, on the swoosh, on the out, like the outline of the swoosh, and then oh, I see it. Okay. Then the four claw marks. Uh huh. So these are really cool, and the claw marks. I feel like only people that are Bruce Lee fans that have seen another dragon will understand. Um, they're not a bad looking shoe. They really scream '90s to me. They do. They really do. In a good way, though. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, in a in a throwback kind of way. Yeah, the problem is is they're white. They're gonna get freaking filthy. They're gonna get scuffed. And so it's very much a I gotta keep these clean type of thing. I would be nervous to wear these. 
Yeah, especially with if you were a like a bigger fan of Bruce Lee than either one of us. Yeah, you wouldn't want these going out and about. Although the price is pretty fair, I have to say, uh, one hundred and eighty. Yeah, that that's surprisingly surprisingly fair. Um, they, they say. Stay tuned to receive word on their official release on Nike.com. They don't have an actual release date yet. So, And on the back, uh, they have Kobe Bryant's, uh, or Kobe, Kobe's signature. So oh, that's nice. Another little, tiny little clutch the chest. Yeah, and it's uh, in like a, uh, is that yellow? Yeah, it's yellow. So for the Lakers, I would assume. And then it's also got like the, the yellow on the heel. But that's nice. I wouldn't have taken Kobe for a uh, Bruce Lee fan. But, I mean... I feel like everybody should be. Anyone that says they're not a Bruce Lee fan hasn't actually watched any Bruce Lee. One of my best friends, his dad is like the big, biggest Bruce Lee fan I know, and he, being the son of this man, has somehow never seen Enter the Dragon. Oh. I, I know. I don't understand it, and I, I want to rectify it eventually. I own Enter the Dragon, because of course I do. Um, and I want to eventually fix this. <laughs> so, um, I have all kinds of movies and television stuff. Okie so, dokie. Um, do you have anything in this realm, or should I just go on a tangent? Yeah, go. Just keep going. Just, just fucking go? Alright, here we go. So, uh, we talked a little bit about HBO Max, I think, uh, in passing, because of, like, they were doing the new Looney Tunes show, stuff like that. Um, I, I have some more information on it now. So, apparently, it is fourteen ninety nine unless you're doing a pre-order and saying that you'll do for 12 months, which is confusing, because they say you can also cancel any time. It'll be eleven ninety nine. Um, they're really banking on the fact that they are going to have everything HBO has, a bunch of new originals. They have all the fresh prints. They have friends. They've got new things like the new Looney Tunes cartoon. Um, they've got, they're going to have things like Studio Ghibli stuff, Doctor Who, uh, Adventure Time, uh, Sesame Street. Uh, uh, Elmo's getting his own show um, at the not too late show with Elmo, and it's like he's sitting there like he's like a, a late show host. Um, Gossip Girl, Raised by Wolves, Search Party, all kinds of stuff for eleven ninety nine. Now it turns out. The way this actually works is because I was always upset. Like, I pay for HBO. Why the hell do I have to pay for this? Um, and apparently, if you pay for HBO on AT&T TV, AT, AT &T TV, DirecTV, AT&T UVerse, as a channel through Hulu or on Spectrum, you get this. Hmm. You get HBO Max as part of your subscription to HBO through those platforms. They are saying they're also hoping to add additional people. So hopefully, Cox users. So it's not being looked at as... It, 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 while it is its own thing away from HBO Now, because that's the other thing, HBO Now subscribers can also get it. So it's not that they're making you pay for multiple subscriptions, it's that they're trying to make it work through the partners that they have. So everyone that has it through AT&T, DirecTV, Uverse, Spectrum, Hulu, um, I guess YouTube TV new subscribers, Apple and Google Play new subscribers also, um, and then possibly more. So eventually this could be something that everyone can have just for paying for HBO or paying for HBO now. Huh. So while the eleven ninety nine isn't the greatest thing to look at, it may uh, never yeah. actually be a problem. Yeah, you might not even have to even shell out an extra dime because, oh, hey, I already pay for it. Yeah, so that, that, that's kind of kind of a nice concept. And and there are definitely things about this that I wanted to check out. Now, here's the weird thing: we've talked about DC Universe and how there's things there I want, but not enough to convince me to pay for it. Let me the guess, big I'm thing, getting it? Well, no, I'm not getting it. Uh, the big thing that I like on DC Universe that I want to watch is Doom Patrol, which will be available on HBO Max. <laughs> really, really? Yeah. So uh, if if my Cox subscription does end up eventually counting towards this, then I will be covered to be able to watch Doom Patrol without paying an extra dime. So that's very nice. Um, another streaming service thing here. Okay. 
Um, have you heard about Peacock? Uh, it just, uh, the, that's the NBC one, yeah? Yep, NBC Universal. Um, it will be starting July 15th is when it launches. Now, what I didn't know is I'm a huge fan of Psych. I'm, have you ever watched it? Uh, I remember you mentioning it, but I, I've seen maybe two episodes in passing. I'm a big fan, and a couple years back they did a movie, and they've all pretty much agreed that they're down to keep doing movies forever. Um, the movie came years after the cancel of the show, the end of the show, not even the cancel, they ended the show. Well, they're doing a sequel to the movie, and I just found out today that it will not be airing on television. It'll be airing on Peacock when it launches. So, sadly, I won't get to watch the movie when it comes out, unless I pay for Peacock. They're using mostly old shows right now to try to get people to do it. If you pay for Peacock, you'll get Cheers, you'll get The Office, you'll get Shrek, all of it. Um, Live sporting events. uh, They're doing a whole scissor reel platform tease thing that you can check out if you want to see more. Um, But they're going to have Battlestar Galactica, they're going to have Saved by the Bell, because they're rebooting both of those. They're going to do reboots of those. So you're going to have all this plus other stuff that they're doing on Peacock. Um, Law and Order. 30 Rock Law and Order. Uh, they've got like a DreamWorks animation deal, so they're going to be doing a new uh, show with that. Um, they're doing uh, Curious George stuff, all, all kinds of things. It's four ninety nine a month, or nine ninety nine if you want ad free. I mean, for four ninety nine, that's still not bad. Yeah, and and I may just possibly see if there's a free trial when the movie comes out and just watch the movie. <laughs> Right. And then cancel it. Kind of, kind of. That's kind of how I, I treated YouTube Red. I, I tried it for the free trial. It wasn't enough for me, and I got rid of it. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. What? I mean, I'm, I, I just read something. Watch thousands of hours, always available for free, or easily upgrade to a premium plan for four ninety nine a month. You can get this for free. What's the difference between the free and the four ninety nine? Because what I'm seeing here is it's four ninety nine a month or nine ninety nine if you don't want ads. I'm looking. I don't know. It just says I'm looking at it. it. The best part is it's free as a bird. Okay. Well, July is just two months away. We'll keep an eye on it and maybe try it out and kind of give a review. See, I yeah. like free. I like free too. And also, it, it even mentioned like uh, when I went down to the movie list, uh, E.T. Schindler's List. I was like, all right, you got two big hitters, and then it went into. Uh, a couple other movies that I was just like, why are you throwing these here? <laughs> don't don't try and don't try and promote those. Put those in the back. Yeah. I uh, I also saw so, Shrek up there, and I was like, no. Yeah, uh, Shrek, the full series. I, I don't understand that. Are people seriously still watching Shrek? I haven't watched Shrek in years, and I probably never will again. I don't even know if I'm necessarily going to show my kids Shrek. Yeah. No. <laughs> so. You want to um, the downfall of Michael Myers' career. I hate to look at it that way, but that's honestly how it is. Uh, moving on over to some Disney stuff. Um, the New Mutants finally gets another release date. <laughs> this poor I, I, fucking I, I, movie. I, I'm, I, I'm already over it. <laughs> like When it releases, that's when I'll care. But as of right now, I don't care. It provided nothing goes wrong, we're looking at uh, August 28th. Cool. So... And this isn't Disney's fault. Fox dicks the dick this movie around. Oh, Disney yeah. oh, bought no. Fox and went, "Oh, we're going to release it." And then coronavirus happened and fucked it all up. I mean, you're, we're talking what? Uh, it was supposed to come out April thirteenth. Yeah, so it was supposed to come out a long time ago. But yeah, I get it. It's just I don't say something, then give us a huge pushback unless there's an actual reason for it. If it's already in post production, like I thought it was, there's a reason they it, on the movie's done. Yeah, so then give us a reason why you're not doing anything with it. Well, Fox, I don't know their reasoning. Disney's reasoning was theaters got shut down. Oh, yeah. So they couldn't release it unless they were going to do video on demand. Um, and then The Mandalorian. Uh, Mark Hamill actually weighed in on how he feels about Boba Fett returning because Boba Fett's confirmed for season two. Uh-huh. Um, so he, he talks about it. He goes, I thought he was... Uh, he talked about uh, that he was a. Uh... My brain just completely broke. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> uh, you got anything for for me to to pop out with? 
Um, no, sorry. Uh, it's just, he talks about uh, Fabry's um, how how many ways you can go with it, with uh, things that Fabry is doing, and how many ways you can go with the Mandalorian just in general. So bringing in um, Boba Fett was an interesting point, and he kind of really talks about you know he was dead, and you know that's kind of his thought process and whatnot, but. It being back isn't necessarily a bad thing. He doesn't seem negative on it. Um, I feel like people are asking him Star Wars stuff, and it's like, you understand, he, he was Luke. He doesn't necessarily, he's not all of Star Wars. Um, along with this, we got the, uh, we know about the fact that um, we've already talked about some of the animated characters are going to get to play live with, uh, what is her name? Rosario Dawson yeah. playing Anakin's Padawan. But now also, the actress's name is escaping me. Um, did you ever watch Battlestar Galactica? Nope. No, sir, I did not. Okay. Um, so that's the thing she's be- uh, known for mostly. But for me, I know her from uh, Longmire, the one that played his uh, assistant, uh, assistant deputy assistant sheriff. Um, uh, Vic is the character name. But it's Kate uh, Sackoff. She actually uh, voices a character in Clone Wars and is going to play the live action version of that character in The Mandalorian. Uh, okay. So it's Bo, Bo Cotton, uh, K- K-A-T-A-N. Uh, so she's going to be playing the live action version for at least one episode. We're not entirely sure where or, how, or if it'll be like a reoccurring thing. But yeah, so now I really feel like I need to finish watching goddamn Clone Wars before I can watch season two of The Mandalorian because there's all these... Clone Wars characters coming in, and I am behind on Clone Wars. Yeah, I, uh, far, far behind. Damn. Um, I, I'm still in like season three or four, and I'm assuming you're probably still in season one. <laughs> uh, beginning of season two, I'll have you know. Okay, I'm sorry. Lauren's still in season one. <laughs> so lots of Mandalorian stuff. Um. If, if you want to, uh, there was a whole entertainment tonight thing with Hamill. If you really want to see what he talked about, but basically it was that he was, he thought he was digested in the Sarlacc uh, pit and like, he kind of joked about it, but that he is okay with, you know, with where Favre is going with all this. And I don't know that we necessarily, I love Mark Hamill, but I feel like people keep looking at him to give his seal of approval on things. And I don't understand why, you know, like he doesn't have control over Boba Fett. <laughs> no, um, but. I guess an opinion, though? Yeah, I mean, being there in the moments the character dies, I guess, I guess you know. Um, and then the other thing is, did you read Percy Jackson at all? Oh, uh, no. Okay. I didn't really read it either, but I, I kind of respect the series, and, you know, the character is dyslexic, which is also a really interesting thing, and they give a reason for it, him being a demigod and stuff like that. Um, I had watched the first movie and really enjoyed it. And then Disney kind of dropped the ball with this one and Chronicles of Narnia, where it's like they made these movies about these young characters, then didn't quickly make the sequels and the actors aged too quickly. You know, they didn't want, they didn't go through and do what they should have done. Like Harry Potter did, or it's like every year filming a movie because every year he's getting older. Well, I guess, you know, that the second one didn't really work. They're rebooting the whole thing and they're doing Percy Jackson as a Disney Plus show. Uh, they're going to do uh, all five books. Um, they're going to break them into seasons. Uh, beginning with the Lightning Thief. So they're starting at the beginning of the book series. And they're actually bringing in um, Rick uh, Riordan, the author. He says he's going to be there. He's going to be part of it. He says uh, he's going to be basically final person for all this stuff. So expect this to be very faithful. Did I lose you? Nope. Okay. So uh d- another that's just the other Disney Plus thing I had. Everything else I have is um uh we're very weird. I sent you this. Uh the blacklist is gonna do its final season uh animated and they're saying it's kind of a comic book animation and they, they dropped a trailer. I don't like the way it looks. Very strange. This does not look great. It looks like it wants to be more mature, and then it pulls out the... God, what's that GameCube game called? Uh, 13. 
pulls out that art style, and I was like, why? I'll admit, having your having your whole crew have to stay at home and do VO, I'm like, that's good. That's really good. But this is a very cheap art style. Yeah, it reminds me of, like, early Telltale. You know what? Yeah, a little bit of that, but it, it more reminds but, me of... Uh, but 13. worse. <laughs> show you. It's not great. Like, and I never want to be down on an artist for their work, but the fuck happened here? Image, Quincy. It gives me that vibe immediately. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I see that. Like, it's a good game. I don't. I re- I recommend it if you ever get a game PS2. I think it's also on Xbox. I have a PS2 still. Um, but 13's a good one. Um, so. Blacklist fans, let let us know what you think of this. Them deciding to go animated so you can have your final season because they couldn't film it, but then giving you this as the animation. Yeah, I mean, if it's if it's the story you're going to get into and enjoy, it it allows and that kind of like animation allows you to do things that you aren't normally able to do. So it makes me wonder: Are they going to go over the top with it? That's another thing. Are they going to do something far fetched? I don't know. And it's an interesting idea. Uh, blah, 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 blah. And then my final things are a little sportsy based. We got, we got some sports type stuff for you guys. So NFL football will uh, return, um, but due to current restrictions imposed in response to the current pandemic. Um, they're going to kind of ease into things, starting with broadcasting the games, but they're going to put in, they're going to virtually put in fans and crowd noises. That's weird. Like, just... Have empties. If you have empty yeah, seats... Just they're... have, yeah, just for, put, uh, fucking just have them play the game, have an announcer, call it good. We don't need... The crowd noise is the virtual fans, really. And uh, watch, I bet you anything, someone's going to screw up at least on one of these games, and they're going to make it too loud, and you're not going to be able to hear shit that's being said by the announcer. Yeah. This is a weird choice. I, a, I don't I don't like this. This is a very weird choice, but at the same time, just... I don't know what to think about it. I'm more of a baseball person than I am an a, a NFL okay, person. What if, what if they did this? What if the... Um, if MLB did this? Yeah, if MLB just said, hey. I would mute my TV. <laughs> yeah. Like, I would mute my TV and I would pull up my Sirius XM and just listen to those announcers while watching the game because I don't want to listen to that. Fair. Like, this just doesn't appeal to me. Meanwhile, on the other side of the spectrum, you got WWE saying, hey, we could do this maybe. Yeah, SummerSlam's coming up. So, um, what, uh, August for SummerSlam? Yeah, August 24th for SummerSlam. Um, they're talking that it may be pushed back to September. Uh, they're hoping to actually open it up to fans. Um, they're refusing to, in, uh, to just full on cancel the event. Um, which I get, uh, even if they have to come through and be like, okay, it's a closed event. They don't want to cancel it, you know? Um, but they're really hoping, uh, they're keeping an eye on like, Florida and Georgia, because those are the states that have been so, like, we're open. Um, but they're still hoping to do it in Boston. Uh, if Boston will let them. But they really want fans in those seats. They don't want to accept no fans. And I'm wondering how much of this is people are complaining at how terrible their events have been, watching these without the audience. And how much this is they're hurting for money. Um... My issue is the reason why you're getting negative reactions from the fans who are watching this is because of the stupid shit you're doing rather than just having the wrestling going on without with an empty audience. AEW is doing that. They're having wrestling going on with an empty audience, and it's amazing. But WWE is taking this as a chance to like do weird shit, and it's just not working. Um, would you go to this event no. during all this? No. Me neither. So, uh, the other thing that WWE did is they brought back in your house. That's funny. I, I when I saw um, the thing, I was like, 
Oh, you. So, for anyone that's too young for this, I'm. That's a scary thought. Uh, Edgar House was a big thing back in the '90s. It was the pay per view. Um, and so they brought back in your house, but they're doing it with NXT. So it's in your house NXT takeover. Uh, and they put the old nineties logo over the current NXT logo. Uh, the first one I think is set for what? June 7th. Uh, yeah. Uh, they're going to do one on June 7th. It will stream live on the WWE network. Triple H explained that the branding, uh, uh resurrection, uh, is it saying that because people are spending so much time in their houses in lockdown, it only seems uh, apropos because he's trying to be, you know, smart. Uh, that, that right now we do something about that. I like seeing the old stuff come back, and this was really cool. I find it interesting they did it with NXT. I'm glad they did because I feel like they kind of shit on NXT a little bit, but uh, this feels like a good way to get some of the old school guys interested into the newer people. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that would also be like, huh, this looks really, really cartoony and fun. And like, then you have like grandpa pop up and be like, oh yeah, I remember seeing that a long time ago. Did you just call me grandpa? (laughs) Like, bitch, me and you watched fucking In Your House. Fuck off. (laughs) But what year did it, what year did it start? Let's go with that. It started in the, Eighty-nine, was it? I think it was eighty-nine. Because let's find out first. WWF in your house. It was ninety-five. I think five. Yeah. Why do I feel like your house one was like ages before that? Though, why do I feel that way? Was it King of the Ring that I'm thinking of? Maybe King of the Rings old. Uh, nineteen ninety. Okay. All right. Okay. Fine. I was wrong. Yeah. Uh no. Uh King of the Ring started before 90 in 1990. Oh, wait, first event for King of the Ring was 1993 is what this says. Um Oh, the main 19 Yeah, see it had been a tournament in 85, but it looks like the first like King of, King of the Ring pay-per-view was 93. Okay. I uh, WrestleMania, I mean WrestleMania was started before us. Yeah. So, I mean, you can go with that. I mean, the first WrestleMania was 85. Uh, and then, lastly, uh, yeah. you are not up to date with AEW still, right? Okay. Well, they were supposed to have a pay-per-view um, out here, Double or Nothing. Um, or Double or Nothing. Uh, this was the one that started everything for them before they actually had the show on TNT. Uh, they started with the Double or Nothing pay-per-view. So they're coming. They were supposed to be coming back. We were actually going to go. Now we don't get to because of uh, the pandemic. But they're still going to do the pay per view. So they're doing a couple things. So they're doing uh, like a ladder match where rather than climbing up to get a briefcase or a belt, they're climbing up to get a poker chip. Uh, and they got a couple different things that are kind of fun. They're all Vegas themed things. Um, the name itself, Double or Nothing. But the big match is going to be. Uh, Cody Rhodes versus uh, what is his name? I can never remember this dude's name. He's the one that Jake the Snake is pushing right now. Uh, Lance Archer. Um, and they're gonna have Mike Tyson there. Whoa. Yeah. Um, he's going to be uh, like honoring the winner essentially. Um. Which is a big deal because a couple things. One, Mike Tyson, you know, Vegas, it fits. But furthermore, he used to do a bunch of WWE stuff back in the day. He was part of DX. Yeah, and he tried to, uh, uh, he wanted to start a feud against, uh, uh, Stone Cold. Yep. Uh, him and Stone Cold had a whole thing where they were going up against each other and whatnot. So this will be interesting. Um, it's a championship event, so he's going to be the one, I think, doing the whole, like, here's the belt type stuff. So, it's a, it's funny to see AEW starting to hit points that WWE had hit, but they're doing it quick, and they're not spending too much time on it. Yeah. So, but that's all I've got. That's all I've got also. We're just peeking over two hours. Are we? Yeah. We, uh, 
we're starting to get more news now. The world's starting to open back up a little bit, and it may not last. It may. I don't know. But we'll see. Um, Cheeseburger. I, I've got... I've got one for you now. Uh, Burger. We talk about shoes quite often, and it's almost always the same brand, but a couple brand, other brands uh, get in there. So this one, I, I think you'll hate. Just brew it. Brew it. I don't mind it. <laughs> all right. Well, it's a little forced, but brew it. Well, that's all I've got today, guys. Thanks. <laughs>